uh, next video you're about to watch is uh, from uh, October 16th in Atlantic, Iowa. Uh, all candidates were invited to a forum to meet uh, the Southwest Iowa Coalition to uh, introduce ourselves and uh, listen to any concerns that they had for uh, rural economic development and uh, the uh, the special issues that affect uh, Southwest Iowa. So. Uh, the other candidates were allowed to speak, and I was too. Uh, they gave us about five or six minutes to talk to the group. So it was a, a really wonderful evening. I got to meet some candidates that I had not met before and uh, do some networking. So uh, you'll see my speech, and then I'll also post the, uh, the other candidates' speeches too with uh, their websites on them. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. I'm also a candidate, so let me turn my camera on myself here, so I don't have a campaign manager, I don't have any money, but I've got a video camera. Dr. Heeb, would you mind filming me? This is already running. The NSA isn't here tonight to film this, so. You're sure. Well, they're probably listening on all of our phones, so my name is Brian Jack Holder. I'm from Council Bluffs. I've lived there my whole life. I. Uh, was raised by poor, hardworking people. My great-grandparents were, uh, both grandpas were Union Pacific Railroaders, and they worked there for 35 years, and let me start my clock. And they were able to, to support a family and have, one family had two kids, the other had four. They were able to have a car, pay for their mortgage, have enough food to, to feed the family, and be able to take a vacation every few years, so. But now the economy is, I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to collapse at some point. There is so much debt, and there's not enough people in this country with jobs to pay taxes to continue to support this. What it is, it's an intergenerational Ponzi scheme that our government has set up, and we inhabit a world that was created to enslave our grandparents and our great-grandparents. And, uh, you know, they say every kid born today is $50,000 in the hole. They're never going to collect that. That's never going to be collected. The people that are getting Social Security now are going to get it until it runs out. And this whole Ebola thing, this could destroy our entire society. There's existential crises that this government doesn't care about because the people in control of Congress and the federal government, they have secret places where they're all going to go and ride out the storm. And the rest of us are screwed. The rest of us are going to have to band together as families. You know, our country used to go and destabilize other countries around the world, but now our government destabilizes our own country. And the message I'm saying, I'm telling you the truth, I haven't taken a penny to run for this office. I wouldn't accept a paycheck if I won. Something I found out before I started this campaign for Congress, I went and found out before you apply for any job, you find out everything about that job. And why are there only 435 people to represent a country of 320? <coughs> I think there's maybe 360 with the illegal aliens. And the reason is the very first amendment to the Bill of Rights would eliminate a congressional district of 50,000 people. 50,000. We have a district here with 760,000. What it means is James Madison, who wrote the Constitution, wanted 15 people to go to Washington and represent this part of, of the state. And I'm calling this the Third Iowa Volunteers. If you vote for me, I don't want you to, but if you do, I'm going to take Stacy and David and Edward, and whoever else wants to go to Washington. And we'll meet like this every night. We'll have a town hall meeting. We'll discuss all these major wedge issues that have us arguing against our parents and grandparents. I mean, the political parties, the Democratic-Republican Uniparty, as I call it, has been in control of our government since the last Civil War. And there are people in both parties that advocate policies that will result, result in another Civil War. I've studied the Civil War. I watched the Ken Burns series several times during my life. I just watched it last week, and uh, I see where this country's going. It's going to collapse. There's going to be anarchy. There's going to be martial law, and uh, history will record that I stood up and said this here tonight, and people will know that somebody told it like it is. So I just want to place the table. Whoever wins uh, this election, I'm going to enter that party and run in the primary alongside that person. So if David wins, I'll rejoin the Republicans running the primary. If Stacy wins, I'll join the Democratic Party because I was registered as a Democrat when I was a kid. And it doesn't matter 
because the two candidates don't even put the word Republican or Democrat on their campaign materials. So they work so hard to get their party's nomination, and then they don't even hide the fact that they're a Republican or a Democrat. And it's, it's dishonest. And the money has ruined politics. So I'm running this campaign without any money. I'm trying to prove to people you can run for federal office for the people's house without having any money. So uh, I've got one thing I'm going to read from you here. This is an excerpt from a, a book that I have. Uh, it's a little thing written by a, by a writer by the name of uh, Ernie Pyle, and he was a World War II reporter, but before that he traveled around the country writing essays, an independent, independent journalist. So, and this is from uh, the, uh, the late 30s. It says, you general farmers around Indianapolis who may read this, you beet farmers in Colorado, you citrus farmers in California, I don't believe you can possibly conceive of what life is like for the half the farmers in the South. A young man and woman marry. They are of the sixth grade intelligence and sunk in the hopelessness and listlessness of one mule sharecropping, debt owning farming. Their parents can't help them, so they go to a supply merchant for furnishing and start life in debt. Thereafter, the girl gets pregnant as soon as as frequently as possible. They live on fat meat and cornmeal, three meals a day. She has never heard of a woman's club. The house is filthy and stays that way. She carries her little baby down to the fence row, lays him down, works in the field. She knows only a few neighbors. Maybe twice a year she goes to town. She doesn't read anything, and they have no radio. They use coal oil lamps, and floors are bare. Likely as not, they don't have a privy. The children are half naked and covered with sores. Soon she is old, and her sickly brood goes out to repeat the process. She chews snuff, spits at the fireplace, hits the wall, and there it stays for posterity, her mark in life. These people are not African Americans, they are whites. So, we're all citizens of America. Tomorrow, if the electricity went out and never came back on, we'd all be equal again. And I hope that we can keep our communities together if that happens. So, thank you for the time, and if anyone wants to talk to me afterwards, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I don't think it's because of uh, lack of uh, volunteership, but uh, for some reason or another, I continue to be the co-chair of the Legislative Committee.